Hi everyone. Very good evening. Welcome to the class. So in the last two classes we have uh, revised random variables topic. So in today's class and tomorrow's class we are going to revise random process topic. So if I'm able to complete a random process topic in today's class or tomorrow early, uh, I'll be able to start uh, revising some topics on noise analysis also. Okay. Fine. Very good. So let us start. Good evening, Deepak. So these are the topics I wanted to cover. So first I'll be discussing what is random process and uh, what is the what is stationarity of random process because stationarity is the most important cause, concept in random process and after that very important autocorrelation function. So we're going to talk about autocorrelation function and we are also going to talk about power spectral density. Most of the previous paper consists of definitely a question from these two topics autocorrelation function and power spectral density of uh, random process. Okay, we'll be talking about properties of uh, properties of these two functions and also problems on these two functions. So, and we'll be discussing about a relation between two random processes like uh, jointly wide and stationary random processes, auto uncorrelated random processes, orthogonal random processes. We'll be talking about, uh, we'll be revising the, the relation between two random processes. And also we'll be talking about uh, what if you pass a random process, a wide and stationary random process through an LTA system. What happens? So what is the relation between uh, uh, input random processes and output random processes of the LTA system? So the power spectral density relation, autocorrelation function relation, the mean value relation. So we'll try to uh, revise those things. So with the help of that, we'll be able to do with whatever we will learn in this uh, random process uh, class, we'll be able to understand uh, noise analysis. Very good. So let us start. So now quickly recollect in your minds what you have learned about random process. I mean just the meaning of random process. What is random process? Let us uh, divide and understand the words. Process means what? Process means something which happens over time right something which happens over time we can we call it as a process so then what is random process something which happens over time is process random process is something which happens over time unpredictably non-deterministically or uncertainly okay that can, that is what we can all call as random process so let me let us take one example okay one simple example is temperature temperature does it happen with time or not temperature uh, you can say it is a function of time definitely it changes with time right it changes with time and does it change in a deterministic manner we, we can't we can't determine the values of temperature every 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 in the every future instant of time right so right now it is 5 o'clock uh, at 5.30. Can you tell me exactly what is the temperature in a particular place? We can't say, right? Roughly we can predict. We can expect some temperature, but we can't exactly predict the temperature. Roughly we can predict that, okay, sir, <coughs> in my place it will be around 30 degrees. But I can't say if it is 30.1 or 30.2. We can't predict, right? So something which happens over with time, but in an unpredictable manner, means what value it takes, we don't know exactly. That kind, anything which uh, happens with time in an unpredictable manner we can call it as random process let me write it I'll give you one more definition also so that you can understand it better a process process means something which happens with time a process whose values or outcomes you can say the process whose outcomes are non-deterministic which means we are not able to exactly determine what values it takes non-deterministic 
can be called a random process. If somebody talks about random signal, yes, they're talking about the same thing, random process. Process or signal. You might have learned signal in signals and systems. Signal is what? It's a function of time. It need not be a function of time only. Signal means it, can, it need not be a function of time or it can be a function of any variable actually. Signal means something which has information, right? So generally, the signals that we talk about in our engineering course is signals which are functions of time, okay? So a random process or if somebody says a random signal, that is also fine. A random process or random signal, both are same. So examples of random signals, temperature is one example. Something which happens with time undeterministically. What else? Marks in semester. Can I say that? A student joins in the first semester. Okay. What will be his first semester result? He does not know. Right. Hey, what is the second semester result? That also he does not know. Third semester, fourth semester. See, his exams happen over time, and the outcome of those exams he is not able to determine, or nobody is able to determine unless the exam happens. Okay. Unless the exam happens, nobody will know. So future values you are not able to determine. For any random thing, only future values only we can't determine. Now, once it happens, we will know the value. Okay. Marks in semester, everything in this world, if you observe carefully, it is random in nature only. If you just look around, you can see lots and lots of random processes. Okay. Marks in semester or how a stock market moves. Every day stock market uh, changes its values, right? And how it changes, nobody can predict. Right? Stock market indices, how Sensex moves, how Nifty moves, or how uh, SNP 500 US market moves. Okay. And like that, we can take a number of examples. Wonderful. Let me give you one more way of understanding random process. A collection of collection of lot of random variables a collection of lot of random variables collection of lot of random variables okay I'll let me say instead of collection uh, let me call it as a set of a set of lot of random variables collected collected at different instants of time collected at different instants of time i'm talking about random process in the language of random variable because we have understood what is random variable right so i'm trying to speak about random process in random variable language a different instance of time a set of lot of random variables lots of random variables together we call it as we call it as random process can be called as random process okay Fine. So let me take the example of random process. We already know those exams, right? So let's say x of uh, x represents x of t represents random process. Generally, we denote a random process in this manner. Some function of time. Process means it's a function of time, right? So that's how we write as x of t. Okay, it's not x of t is not like any other deterministic function like sine of uh, any other deterministic function. But when you say random process, it is a function of time. It is also a function of randomness. It is also having some randomness in it. Okay, with time, this value changes in an undeterministic manner. Okay, this is random process. Okay, so now let's try to understand. If x of t is a random process, you can think of it as a temperature, stock market, or marks in semester. Any random process you can take. Generally, we represent it like this: x of t, or y of t, or z of t, or q of t. Any letter we can use. Okay, since uh, we we have we generally use x as random variable uh, letter generally. 
uh, I'm, I'm in, in the same manner instead of x we are using x of t for a random process see this one if you take uh, at time t 0 t equal to 0 or else t equal to 0 semester if you're talking about the marks in semester marks in semester does not happen continuously no every second uh, you'll not write exams no so you'll be writing exams only every six months so which means it's a discrete random process marks in semester is a discrete random process because the outcome in this case the outcome the marks that you get in the in its semester it is not continuous it is discrete it happens only after every six months so that's why it is a discrete random process and this is a continuous random process okay very good so discrete random process means we generally uh, denote it with uh, this is continuous random process because i'm using the letter t for time so if it is discrete random process we use the letter n six of n is the notation that we use for discrete random process okay so x of zero what does it represent the random process value at zero seconds what does it represent at zero seconds what value will it take we don't know right we don't know right so x of zero x of zero now is this dependent on time means once you substitute t equal to zero this is some function in that function if you put t equal to zero t is vanished once t is vanished is, uh, is there randomness in it definitely there is randomness no because at zero seconds we don't know what is the temperature or we don't know what is the marks in the first semester x of zero for us in the mark for marks in a semester random process if you put n equal to zero it, pre it represents marks in semester zero semester which means first semester let's say marks in uh, first semester marks in first semester before getting the result do you know the result we don't know the result right so we don't know the result if you don't know the value can we not call it as random variable can we call it as random variable that is the definition of random variable no? random variable means what it can take different values but we don't know exactly what value it takes random variable means variable means which takes various values random variable means which takes various values in a random manner undeterministic manner which means i can't say before it happens before before i see the value i don't know what will be the value it can be any of those many values but i don't know what is the exact value so x of 0 is a random variable whereas x of n is a random process because x of n has x of 0 in it x of 1 also in it x of 2 also in it and x of 3 x of 4 x of 5 lot of random variables together x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 all of them together we are calling it as x of n right inside this random process x of n at 0 seconds we have one random variable at 1 second we have one another random variable at 2 seconds we have another random variable at every point at every point of time we have one random variable in the random process which means within the random process we have lots and lots of random variables every second we are having one random variable in the random process so that's why i have said in the second definition if you see it's a set of lot of random variables together which we have collected at every instant of time we have one random variable all of them together we call it as random process okay so here in a temperature case also and let's say you are starting x of zero means zero means what time zero means it is the time at which you have started observing let's say you, are, you have started observing right now let's say 5 15 so now you are you're going to observe after 10 seconds let's say so 0 second is after 10 seconds so before before uh, happening 515 before 515 has not yet happened so before that if i start to, uh, if i try to guess the value i will not be able to guess the value exactly so this is random in nature so can i call it as random variable because it can take at 0 seconds temperature can be any value any values uh, which is fluctuating around 30 degrees centigrade 30 30.1 30 30.2 something like that but i don't know exactly what is the value random variable so x of 1 x of 0 0.1 yes that is also a random variable x of 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 all of them are random variables okay so i hope you have understood what is random process random process means what something which happens with time if it is happening with time at every point of time how it happens it happens in a if it happens in a undeterministic manner if it happens in an unpredictable manner that is what we call as random process okay and the opposite is deterministic process instead opposite of a random process is deterministic process or deterministic signal something like this cos 3t 
cos 4t cos 5t okay e power t square where there is no there is no randomness here at every point of time you know the value exactly so this is deterministic signal this is deterministic signal so let me say this is x of t is equal to cos 3t so if you put t equal to 0 cos 0 is 1 are you getting a random thing no right we are getting a deterministic value here we are getting a deterministic value here so i'll give you one example x of uh, um, x of pi by 3 if you put x of t equal to pi by 3 it is cos pi which is minus 1 at every point of time you are able to determine the value of the signal here so that's why this is deterministic signal or deterministic process i'll give you one example so x of t is equal to cos of 3t plus phi where phi is a random signal phi is a random variable phi is random and which takes any value from 0 to 2 pi let's say i have given one more signal there is no randomness in the frequency there is randomness in the phase you don't know what exactly is the phase when you generate a signal when you generate a signal using a local oscillator any oscillator so phase generated by the oscillator is random in nature which means before generating it we don't know what it, what phase it generates since phase is random at any point of time this total thing total thing also will be random correct x of 0 is what cos of 3t plus 5 sorry 3 into 0 plus 5 this part becomes 0 this becomes cos phi is cos phi deterministic no right because we don't know what is phi phi can be anything from 0 to 2 pi since phi is random cos phi is also random so this is a random variable this is random process this is random process because there is randomness in it there is randomness in it okay but at every instant at any instant of time if you try to analyze it at any instant of time if you analyze it it becomes cos of 3 plus 5 3 is a constant but 5 is random since 5 is random 3 plus 5 will be random cos of 3 plus 5 also will be random we can call it as random variable so using these examples you can understand you can understand uh, the definition that i have given you at every instant of time at 0 1 2 3 at every instant of time it is a random variable random process is a random variable at every instant of time and if there i'll tell you one more way of understanding also random process can also be looked at as a function of is a function of is a function of time correct random process mean process means it's a it's definitely something which happens with time so that's why definitely it will be a function of time and also it will be a function of in this example if you observe it is a function of a random variable phi is a random variable here or it is a function of some randomness will be there no if there is no randomness it will not become a random process only if it is only a function of time it becomes a deterministic process only if there is randomness along with time then only we call it as random process it's a function of time and randomness it's a function of time and randomness when i say randomness it is because of some unpredictable uh, variable inside it some unpredictable variable so i'm not saying random variable by you because not every function can be clearly defined like this cos of 3t plus 5 because if you take y signal what equation will you write for it what is uh, random inside it what variable is exactly random inside it that we can't say right so that's why instead of uh, random i'm instead of saying random variable i'm just simply saying random so that it will be more general okay yes deep has said one uh, the, the points that i was saying in a little different way and that is also perfect each and every sample of random process random process is like a signal right it's a random signal signal means you can sample no if you sample you'll get multiple samples and those samples before the sampling happened you don't know what are the sam sample values sample sample uh, amplitudes right so the sample amplitudes can be anything before sampling you don't know what will be the amplitude of each and every sample so each and every sample you can think of it as a random variable random process if you sample you'll get a lot of random variables every sample is a random variable <clears throat> i hope it is clear so that is the understanding of random process 
so there is a lot of uh, understanding involved here so if you are listening to uh, this topic for the first time uh, if it is clear that's fine if it is not clear just go through this part of the class the introduction part again so that you'll have you can digest it better so generally i'll take more time to understand the basics but uh, since this is revision class i'm going a little quickly okay next in a random process in a random process um there is something called stationarity 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 of a random process rp means random process stationarity means something is not changing right what will not be changing in random process what will not be changing so don't say that values will not be changing values are not changing it is not even not random at all if it is not random we can't call it as random process we are saying random process no which means at every instant of time you are not able to see the values you don't know the values at now in next instant next instant of time at any future instant of time we don't know what value the random process takes okay so what what is the meaning of stationarity of a random process stationarity means something is not changing what is not what what will not be changing for a random process is the characteristics of randomness random process means what we have we have thought of random process lot of random variables no at 0 seconds one random variable at 1 second another random variable 2 seconds another random variable lot of random variables together we are calling it as random process right the random process means random process means a uh, lot of random variables for ran every random variable lot of random variables are there for every random variable what are the characteristics of random variable what uh, characteristics uh, i mean what uh, characteristics it will have it's uh, it will have any uh, every random variable will have a pdf it will have moments right those will define the uh, define the behavior of the random variable how the random variable behaves that is given by the pdf or uh, moments every random variable will have the pdf and moments right so those are the characteristics of uh, the random variables if those characteristics like pdf and uh, moments does not uh, change with time for every random variable in the random process if they have same pdfs or same moments that is what we can call as stationarity okay the stat very good so that's a beautiful word uh, bharat bharat statistical parameters the statistical parameters statistical parameters of every random variable how they are that defines the stationarity of random process let me write it if statistical parameters if the statistical parameters of a random process of a random process if the statistical parameters of a random process does not change with time does not change with time then random process can be said to be can be said to be a stationary random process It can be said to be a stationary random process if the statistical parameters of random process changes with time then that random process can be called as non stationary random process which we will not be interested in we are only interested in stationary random processes okay right so among the statistical parameters what are the two most important statistical parameters one is the density functions pdf or cdf correct pdf or cdf correct pdf and cdf consists of same information arranged in a different format here probabilities at each point will be there here accumulated probabilities will be there right so how do we get pdf or cdf anyone pdf or cdf is formed from the statistics only no 
for example uh, if you're talking about um, uh, temperature so you might have observed the temperature for the last one year you have collected the statistics what temperature uh, how much uh, in on what day what temperature is there uh, how much amount of time it is uh, there okay La state uh, past data past data is what we call as statistics using those statistics only we get this pdf or cdf pdf or cdf does not uh, appear magically okay don't think that so if i let's say uh, if i say some random process name some magic will happen and uh, some pdf will not appear in the air okay that will not happen so we have to observe that uh, whatever random process you are analyzing you have to observe it for lots and lots of longer duration of times and collect the statistics using those statistics only we can tell the probabilities using those probabilities we can only tell we can tell the pdf or cdf so pdf or cdf will not magically appear for every random variable or random process okay so pdf or cdf is the maximum information anybody can give regarding a random process or random variable pdf or cdf is the maximum information that is the maximum data that we can give about random variable or random process using this pdf we can calculate something called moments which is the partial information you can say moments or expectations moments or expectations among moments also we have first order second order third order fourth order fifth order moments right but of them only first order moments and second order moments these are important for us first order and second order moments are sufficient for us for a good understanding of uh, behavior of random variable or random process okay as i told you in, in random variable we have to we are talking about mean mean or average value which is the first order moment next is mean square value or variance which they are second order moments those are sufficient for us to get a rough picture of uh, the behavior of random variable or random process okay and uh, if you remember moments we calculate we, can, we will be calculating from pdf or cdf itself right from pdf and cdf itself we calculate moments but from moments we can't calculate pdf or cdf okay right so having pdf and cdf ready for a random process or random variable is not so easy you should have lots of statistics then only we can calculate pdf for cdf okay right so i told you statistical parameters of random process should not change with time for a random process to be stationary random process what statistical parameters should not change pdf or cdf not changing that can happen or only moments not changing that also can happen if a random process has a pdf for cdf which is a uh, which does not change with time or which is independent of time does not change means it is independent of time variable the statistical parameters are independent of time then that is a stationary random process if particularly and when i'm talking about statistical parameters if i'm talking about particularly pdf or cdf which is the maximum information that we can provide about uh, any random variable or random process if this does not change we call it as strictly stationary random process strictly stationary stationary random process all kinds of pdfs all kinds of joint pdfs and all of that if there does not change with time we call it a strictly stationary random process but only if moments does not change with time if moments does not change with time we can't say anything about pdf because from moments we can't get pdfs so if somebody says moments are not changing with time or moments are independent of time among the statistical parameters moments is one type of statistical parameters okay moments we can calculate from pdf and cdf only if moments does not change with time we can't guarantee that pdf or cdf does not change with time so if moments does not change with time we can't guarantee pdf and cdf changing with time so if moments are not changing with time we can't call it a strictly stationary random process we can only call it as a wide sense stationary random process we can only call it as wide sense stationary random process okay wide sense stationary random process okay <clears throat> so what is important for us only this wide sense stationarity is what is important for us we are not really interested in strictly stationary strictly st strict sense stationary random process or strictly stationary random process we also call it a strictly stationary also strictly sta strict sense stationary 
strict since stationary random process or strictly stationary random process. We are not really interested in strictly stationary random process because having PDFs, somebody comes and talks to me about some random process. I can't just like that get the PDF and CDF. No, I have to observe it for months together. Then only I'll get the PDF or CDF. Right? So that's why analyzing with PDF or CDF is not so easy for a, a new random process. Okay, for that matter, any random process, getting the PDF and CDF is not an easy job. So that's why we generally avoid analyzing using strict and stationary random process. We only analyze using moments. So that's why we talk about only bytes and stationary random process. So you might be asking now, sir, if PDF, from PDF only we'll calculate the moments, no? Then how do we get the moments? If we can't calculate, get the PDF or CDF, how will we get the moments? Yes, very good. That's a good question. If you if you had that in if you had that in mind, let me answer that. So there is something called ergodic random process let me talk about this first hi venkatram good evening so ergodic random process what is ergodic random process if time averages if time averages and statistical averages if time averages and statistical averages are equal then random process is said to be is said to be ergodic okay if time averages and statistical averages time average means what so for example uh, i'm talking about temperature i don't know what is the time now right now, right now the time is 5:32 at 535, I don't know the temperature. 536, 537, I don't know those temperatures. Okay, I can't predict those values. But uh, the uh, the recent past data is there, no? 531, 530, 529, 525, all that data. Last half an hour, I have collected the temperature, no? So from that, can I find some average value? I can average the values that I've collected in the past half an hour or one hour. That is what is time average. Whatever data we have collected in the past, future values we don't know for random variable or random process, but past values we know, no? We can average that, right? If you can average that, that is time average. And if it matches with statistical average, statistical average means using uh, the probabilities. Using probabilities, if you can find the moments, first order and second order moments, those are statistical. Statistical averages means the moments. If these moments, first order moment, let's say mean value, if it is same as, um, if you average the random process for the last half an hour if it is if it is matching with the the mean value that that is ergodic random process similarly if you find a second order moment mean square value for the last half an hour you square all the values and average it and if you can find the second order moment using pdf or cdf if both are matching that is what is ergodic random process okay or i'll just tell you this expectation of x this is statistical average if this is same as time average expectation of x of t x of t if you do time average time average means uh, let's say from the last t, t seconds let's say last t seconds minus t to 0 0 means right now till now means we are, whatever has happened we know those values right so this is time average whatever has happened in the past i'm averaging it i'm since i'm averaging it since we have collected for t seconds it will be divided by t okay so this expectation of x of t is how what is the formula for this integration of x of t into some pdf we will multiply what pdf we don't know because we don't know what is the equation of x of t right in the random process some there will be some random variable we are going to multiply with that random variable here and we are going to uh, the variable of integration also will be that random variable itself inside x of t some random variable will be there for example in the previous example uh, cos of 3t plus 5 here phi is the random variable so you're going to multiply with pdf of phi and you're going to integrate with phi so since i'm gen gen generally taking it as x of t i'm generally taking it as x of t since i don't know what is a random variable inside it i'm simply writing it as pdf and uh, d of uh, since because i don't know what is a random variable inside it <coughs> using probabilities if you find the average we call it as statistical average okay if you just average the values or uh, past time like this that is time average 
same average is if you take if you take its first squared values expectation of x square of t and the integration of x square of t if you do that is that will give you second order statistical averages if they are also same we call it as ergodic random process okay for example some random process is uh, uh, randomly for, for let's say I, I have proposed some random process for you so that random process you don't have any idea you don't have the pdfs with you okay but only you have the last half an hour data so which means so you, you can only calculate the time averages so if you want to calculate statistical statistical averages you should have the pdf or cdf no you should have the uh, large statistics with the last half an hour statistics or one hour statistics uh, that is not sufficient uh, to tell the probabilities without probabilities we can't calculate the statistical averages right so then uh, how can i prove that it is ergodic or not we can't prove if you want to prove you have to collect large chunks of data and have the probabilities then only you can calculate statistical averages once you calculate statistical averages then only you can uh, compare it with time average and and say that whether it is ergodic or not but what we do practically is we're gonna assume that it is ergodic why because generally general observation is that random processes practically most of them are ergodic only ergodic in nature which means their time averages will match with statistical averages even if they don't match also even if they don't mismatch by small percentage also for our convenience what we do is we assume them as ergodic if you assume them as ergodic then statistical averages are same as time averages correct then if you if you can calculate the time average using the last half an hour data if you can calculate the time average since your assumption is ergodic you can assume that as statistical average also just by collecting small amount of data the last uh, uh, half an hour rate of temperature you are able to find the average value time average value since your assumption is ergodic it is also same as statistical averages like that you are able to get the statistical averages assuming ergodic random process by calculating time averages since they are same as uh, statistical averages you are able to get the statistical averages first order moments and second order moments since it is easy to get the first order moments and second order moments i mean the statistical averages only by using time averages assuming that it is ergodic okay since we can get the first order and second order moments easily for any random process that's why we can deal with white sense stationarity we generally don't really deal with strictly strict sense stationarity because the data will not be available for us to analyze the pdfs will not be available moments yes we can get them as we have discussed in the last 10 minutes we can get the moments assuming ergodic random process since we are having moments with us for any random process we can call it as white sense stationary random process okay very good sai krishna uh, plus means human paid classes right so play class i'll be starting soon so i think uh, there will be some schedule right according to that when my communication uh, subject comes then i'll definitely be teaching okay so i hope you have understood what is stationarity and what is specifically white sense stationarity and also ergodic random process so moving forward we'll talk a little bit more about white sense stationarity white sense stationary random process what are the properties exhibited by white sense stationary random process if all the first order and second order if all the first order and second order moments if all the first order and second order moments of a random process are independent of time are independent of time are independent of time then a random process 
can be called as wide sense stationary in short we also call it as wss random process wide sense stationary shortcut is wss so the condition for uh, wide sense stationarity is all the first order moments and second order moments of random process should be independent of time so let me write those conditions here the first thing that should be exhibited by wide sense stationary random process is if you apply the first order moment for any random process x of t I am taking the notation for random process as x of t. If it is discrete random process, you can take it as x of n also, no problem. Whatever we analyze for continuous random process, same thing will be valid for discrete also. This should be independent of time. So this should be independent of time, which means it should be a constant. Constant or independent of time. Try to understand this carefully. Independent of time. Whenever somebody says expectation, expectation means always imagine it as some kind of integration with respect to the random variable. Expectation of x of t means you are going to integrate. So just for example sake, uh, take x of t as cos of 3t plus 5, the example that we have taken in the previous slide, where phi is random variable. Since phi is random variable, if you want to find expectation of cos of 3t plus 5, Whatever you want to average, take that. I want to average this. I am taking this. So we have to multiply with. Whenever you want to average something where there is randomness, we are going to multiply with the corresponding probabilities. So we have to go on to multiply the probability with the probability of phi, which is PDF of phi, f phi of phi. And since the variable of integration is variable of integration, also should be the same random variable. I hope you should understand now. Expectation of x of t means inside x of t, whatever is the random variable, multiply with the PDF of that and integrate with respect to that variable only. Okay, very good. Now try to understand this. Since we are, the variable of integration is phi, since the variable of integration is phi, after integration, we are going to substitute phi with upper limit and lower limit. So phi will vanish. Phi definitely will vanish, which means the randomness will vanish. That much we know. Once you apply expectation, randomness will, will vanish. But is there any necessity that t should vanish? Yes, no. Is there any necessity that t should vanish? Not necessarily, right? But for a wide sense stationary random process, since first order and second order moments will be independent of time, t will vanish. t need not vanish basically, but it will vanish for a wide sense stationary random process. I hope you are observing the difference between a normal random process and WSS random process. For a normal random process, the expectation if you apply, t need not vanish, which means it will be a function of time. Randomness will vanish, but it will be, still, still be a function of time. But for a wide sense stationary random process, that t will vanish somehow magically. Next, second part. Next, how about the second order moment? Expectation of x square of t. Second order moment. That also should be constant. Again, same funda. x square of t. If you, you are doing expectations, you are integrating with respect to the random variable. So we are expecting a random variable to vanish. There is no need of t to vanish. Okay. For a normal random process, t need not vanish. But for a wide sense stationary random process, t will vanish. If t vanishes, then it will become a constant or it becomes independent of time. Very good. There is one more second order moment, which is variance. So don't get confused here. For random variable, whatever moments, same moments we are talking for random process also. Instead of expectation of x, expectation of x square, sigma x square, I am using expectation of x of t, expectation of x square of t sigma x, x, x square of x of t square so whatever discussion we have done for random variable same things most of it is valid for random process so if you have understood random variables clearly random process will be a cakewalk so this also should be a constant for a non wide sense stationary random process it need not be constant okay so because when you are doing average some average only randomness will vanish but uh, t need not vanish but for if, for if it vanishes, if t vanishes, then only it is a wide sense stationary random process. 
so are the first order and second order moments over there are few more second order moments you have to analyze carefully there are few more second order moments the auto correlation function the auto correlation function the auto correlation function this should be independent of time i'll explain a little bit more about this this should be independent of time rxx of <coughs> it should become equal to rxx of tau which means t should vanish so which is we can't call it as constant because it's a function of tau i'll explain more about this just wait for a minute independent of time we can't call it as constant here because there is one variable tau here that's right and one more thing also should happen cxx of t comma t plus tau the covariance if you remember for two random variables we have talked about something called correlation and covariance we're talking about similar things here only the notation is different but the concept is exactly same as correlation and covariance if cxx of t comma t plus tau is independent of time if all these five things happen then only it's a white sense stationary random process but do we need to check for all these five things if somebody asks me a question is there is this random process wss or not if they ask me should i find all these five not required if you can find five that's fine but your time is unnecessarily getting wasted because if you find this and if you find this that is sufficient because if these two if these two are satisfying if these two are independent of the one and four the mean value and the autocorrelation function if they are independent of time automatically other things also will be independent of time because from from autocorrelation function only we can get these two from autocorrelation function we can get this from using autocorrelation function only we can get autocovariance also okay from autocovariance you can get this so since there is a relation between all of them the first and fourth if they are independent of time 2 3 and 5 also will be independent of time so you don't need to waste time by finding all of them you just need to find the mean value and autocorrelation value only two things but basically all five should be independent of time but to find out if all the five are independent of time or not one and four if you find out that is sufficient okay uh sham babu so you want the best book for practicing random process so i would suggest you to practice wonderful book a sham series for specifically for a random process as you are asking random variables random process sham, sham series is very good very good book sham series for random variables random process and noise that is one good book so first of all you can uh, if you are having study material if you are having sufficient questions in that you can practice that also mostly the questions will be same similar questions will be there in most of the materials only so if there is one good material that you feel is good take that any study material of any any good coaching institute if there are sufficient practice questions you can take that you can uh, see in my group also i have posted uh, some questions some really good questions uh, some workbooks i have posted i think that might be useful for you you can search electronics by dinesh gutta mm, you can find the pdfs that i've shared you can make use of them so do, it's not like so, so don't try to practice thousands of questions not required if you practice uh, 50 questions also so practice them perfectly make sure that each and every bit of it you are able to understand try you are trying to do the problem in multiple ways try to do the same problems in multiple different ways different angles uh, that is more efficient than uh, making the count of a number of problems like thousand i have to solve thousand so i'm really good at it so solving 50 uh, spending more time is much better than uh, solving a thousand in less time yes probability of error questions asked so yes probability of error questions are asked not only in 2021 lots of previous papers also uh, those problems you will i do i have not seen them much actually um, to the level of gate there are tough problems also available in uh, some textbooks like simon hakins or other books but those are not uh, those are like a little complicated questions to the level of gate i think uh, questions are being framed on their own okay if you are able to access my plus course any plus course um, then i have explained the models possible so if you can go through the understanding of those concepts then it will be easy for you to solve those questions okay i've developed a, a flow to understand uh, 
the concept regarding concept behind those problems once you understand the concept behind those problems those problems are easy and i think i've made some youtube videos also so how to solve those questions i think yeah i don't remember exactly which video but if you can browse through my videos if i have i, am, I might have solved uh, questions on probability of error if you have time you can go through them okay wonderful okay good so fine white sense stationary random process so i'll just recollect what we have discussed in uh, the previous class regarding random variables if you remember r x y we have discussed no which is expectation of x into y the product average of the product sorry you are asking about gate 2020 yeah? particularly gate 2020 also i have solved actually yes i have solved that paper is also available in youtube 2020 2021 both i have solved uh, and all the previous year papers regarding communications i have solved only thing is you have to search properly right so if you remember we have discussed this rxy is correlation we call it It is expectation of x, y. Correlation means what? We are trying to find the relation between the random variables. Similarly, there is one more thing called C, x, y. The definition for it is expectation of x minus x bar into y minus y bar. So this is the definition of covariance. Covariance. So if you... Uh, try to understand autocorrelation and autocovariance in relation with these things, then it will be very easy. Okay. Shambhav, I hope I have answered your questions. If there is anything else, uh, kindly um, ask me after 7, around 7.30 or so while I am closing the class. Okay. Because many students are waiting for what I will be discussing now. So, for them, your questions may not be very relevant, right? I don't know if it will be relevant or not. So we'll be discussing at the end of the class. Okay. I'll spend as much time as you want at the end of the class. Okay. Anything uh, out of the subject, please discuss at the end of the class or at the starting of the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. So now see this one. R x x of t comma t plus 2. This is the notation that we are taking. So just understand. Try to compare with this and understand. Expectation of the meaning of this is x is the random process at t seconds. At some time, a random process is a random variable, right? And at some other time, t plus tau seconds, it is another random variable. Random process x of t at t seconds and t plus tau seconds, they are two different. This is one random variable at t seconds and this is another random variable at t seconds. This is similar to x into y only. This is similar to x into y, exactly similar to this one. Here also we are talking about relation between two random variables of same random process at two different instants of time. Okay. So that since time is involved here, time is involved and time difference. Tau is the time difference. Whatever two random variables that you are talking about, they have some time difference, no? Because in random process, there are lots of random variables and uh, there is some time gap between each and every random variable. That time gap is, uh, is, uh, given, uh, is, is given by tau. So tau is one variable which talks about time difference between two random variables that we are interested in. T represents the exact time. So here, autocorrelation, we are calling it as, actually this is correlation. Here, here, this is this is correlation between this is correlation between here it is correlation between x and y. No. Similarly, here it is correlation between x of t and x of t plus tau. Two different random variables only, but the notation is different. Instead of x and y, we are calling those random variables as x of t and x of t plus tau. Okay. 
so here also we talk about exactly correlation but uh, since we are talking about correlation between two random variables of same random process instead of calling it as correlation actually we are speaking this is correlation only but we are just renaming it as auto correlation because the correlation is about correlation between two random variables of same random process that's why there is one more way of uh, writing this auto correlation function instead of writing t t plus tau we can also write as t1 t2 also because finally we are interested in two random variables at two different instants of time so two different instants of time you can uh, write it as t t plus tau or t1 t2 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 t3 anything is fine no so the two instants of time the, that we are interested in is t1 t2 let's say then expectation of we are interested in the random process x of t at t1 seconds at t1 seconds the random variable is x of t1 and we are interested in the random process at t2 seconds the random variable at t2 seconds is x of t2 we want to find the correlation between these two so this gives us correlation between x of t1 random variable and x of t2 random variable so we can use this notation or this notation any both of the notations are frequently used i hope you understood the meaning of it right so this is expectation of so what are the variables involved here the variables involved are t tau and randomness correct some random variable is also there no inside uh, x of t if it is cos 3t plus phi is the random variable some randomness when you apply expectation what variable should vanish what variable should vanish anyone when you apply expectation expectation means average when you apply expectation when you apply expectation randomness will vanish correct only randomness will vanish we can guarantee only randomness to vanish because expectation is integration with respect to the random variable so since you are integrating with respect to random variable random variable will vanish so t and tau should remain so the result here the result should be some function of the result should be a function of function of t and tau correct huh? so here here it should be a function of t1 and t2 function of t1 and t2 right so t and tau but for a white sense stationary random process for a white sense stationary random process what happens we want the moment to be independent of time which means t should vanish t will disappear t will disappear which means it will be a function of only tau time difference it will be a function of only tau which is time difference here for a white sense stationary random process the same concept it will it should be independent of time which means it should be independent of t1 and t2 but uh, it will be dependent on time difference right what is time difference here t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1 the result that we are going to get here can be anything but if it is a white if we are talking about a white sense stationary random process the result will be something like a function of t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 so here the difference between the time here is tau the difference between the time here is t2 minus t1 or t1 minus t2 ha ah, gargi patel i am not really good at hindi man <clears throat> okay fine i hope you have understood so i hope you have understood what is the meaning of independent of time the time t should vanish basically t can vanish may vanish or may not vanish for a random process but if it is wss random process t definitely will vanish so when i am writing in this format i am saying that i am not saying that it is a function of only time or uh, tau okay when i am saying this is equal to this i am i am trying to signify that t is vanishing which means it is independent of time whenever i write like this it means t can be removed which means it is independent of time so which means we can say we are talking about a white sense stationary random process only this relation is not sufficient to conclude white sense stationarity only this relation is not sufficient this also should happen only by looking at this if you say white sense stationarity that is not a correct answer so this and this both should be satisfied okay
very good next similarly shall we understand about covariance also auto covariance also x e x x of t comma t plus to same concept it is expectation of x of t so c means it's a covariance covariance means it is also correlation only but uh, by removing the mean value by removing the mean value we are going to find the correlation first we are interested in the random variable at time t seconds x of t and we are also interested in the random variable t plus tau seconds x of t plus tau minus x bar of t plus tau okay very good so this is the definition of uh, covariance so exactly same as this i'm not writing anything different from this one this is easy to uh, observe and understand right it is also same but the notations are little different okay only notations are different here x is a random variable here x of t at t seconds it is a random variable only instead of y we are having x of t plus tau since we are talking about covariance between two different random variables of same random process instead of calling it as covariance we are calling it as auto covariance auto covariance we are calling it as auto covariance okay so this function if you apply expectation randomness will vanish but uh, other variables need not vanish no it can other the remaining the result in the result randomness can vanish but it will be a function of t and tau right but for a wide sense stationary random process somehow magically that t will vanish so the result will be only a function of only tau okay for a wss random process here also for a wss random process t will disappear here also t will disappear okay right so if t disappears this we can write it as like this also because there is no necessity of t for a wide sense stationary random process so auto covariance we can note it denote it like this also for a wide sense stationary random process right now let me let us understand the relation between auto covariance on auto correlation these two let us try to establish the relation between these two <clears throat> auto covariance also you can understand with t1 t2 times also you can try to write the same thing with t1 and t2 also you'll be you'll be able to write it it's easy thing so we know the definition for this we have already written it here i'm just want, i just want to expand it yes correct okay x of t into x of t plus tau this into this i'm writing minus x bar of t into x of t plus tau next up minus x of t this into this to x bar of t plus tau minus into minus is plus this into this x bar of t into x bar of t plus tau try to understand this carefully so before understanding i just want to recollect something here for you try to understand the basic uh, <coughs> fundamentals regarding expectation expectation of a constant what is it can you tell me expectation is it is integration with respect to the random variable there is no randomness here if there is no randomness there is no need to expect anything even if you try to expect also it will be the same thing it is the same constant expectation of k is k expectation of what is t t is time variable what is expectation of t there is no randomness no here if it is not there is no randomness it will be the same thing i hope you are following expectation of cos 3t what is it it is cos 3t only because expectation means it is integration with respect to random variable because the, but there is no randomness randomness here random variable here so what i mean to say is expectation of deterministic signal we are earlier learned that expectation of constant is constant it's not only constant expectation of deterministic signal also 
expectation of a deterministic signal is exactly same as the same deterministic signal. See this one, this is deterministic signal or not? There is no randomness in it. So the answer, if you apply expectation also, it is the same. Expectation of a deterministic signal is same deterministic signal. And expectation of uh, anything, expectation of anything, a random process or a random variable, what is the result? Expectation of x of t or expectation of x, uh, random variable, or expectation of anything, the result, will it be deterministic or not? Will it be deterministic? Yes, no. Yes, no. Whenever you apply expectation, you are integrating with respect to the random variable. Correct? Huh? Expectation of x means what? Integration of x into fx of x dx. No. So when you are integrating with respect to random variable, after integration, you are going to substitute the upper and lower limit. So x will vanish. So the randomness will vanish. No. Whenever you apply expectation, randomness will vanish. Once the randomness will vanish, will it should it be constant? It need not be constant always. Sometimes it will be constant. Sometimes it will be some deterministic signal. Sometimes it will be deterministic signal. Right? So always remember this. Whenever you apply expectation, the result will be deterministic. Once it is deterministic, if you apply expectation on a deterministic signal, it, will, it is again deterministic signal only. Right? Hope you are following. Uh, Vengatram, uh, we will see. Vengatram, uh, noise analysis also I wanted to take. Uh, but uh, we'll, I'll discuss with the team and uh, I'll proceed according to their decision. Okay. <clears throat> so let us analyze this one. So expectation of x of t into x of t plus t. How is it looking like? Expectation of the first part is it looking like autocorrelation or not? R x x of t comma t plus t. Next, minus x bar of t. X bar of t. Okay. Let me tell this expectation of deterministic signal. Expectation of deterministic signal multiplied with random signal or random process. Let's say what will be the result? Can I say can I put this deterministic signal outside? Or simply you can think of it as expectation of constant times some random signal. You will put that constant outside. No. So deterministic signal also, whenever you are talking about expectations, deterministic signal also you treat like a constant only. It's not a constant, but you can treat it like a constant. Okay, so deterministic, the same deterministic signal, you can put it outside the expectation multiplied with expectation of that random process. Whenever constant or a deterministic signal is inside the expectation, you can put that outside. Then the result will not change. Now see this one x bar of t. Bar means it's average or expectation. So this is deterministic signal. Can we put this outside the expectation? We can put this outside the expectation and apply the expectation of the inside part. It will be again x bar of t plus t. X bar or expectation of both are same. Next one. Here this is uh, this bar. This one. This is expectation of x of t plus t. This is like a deterministic signal. We can put it outside the expectation. When you apply expectation on this total thing, you can put this outside. We can put this x bar of t plus t outside. What is remaining? This one. This is random. Uh, when you apply expectation, it becomes again deterministic. x of t bar. Last one. This is deterministic. This is deterministic. Product is also deterministic. Expectation of deterministic signal is same deterministic signal. So we can cancel this. We can cancel this. So this is equal to R x x of t comma t plus tau minus x bar of t into x bar of t plus tau. So this is the relation between autocorrelation and autocovariance general relation. We have not assumed Whitesen stationarity here. Without assuming Whitesen stationary random process, we have done this. If you assume Whitesen stationary, then what happens? Then what happens is things will look more simpler. So this will look like, so this one, this will look like cxx of t comma t plus tau will look like cxx of tau because t we can remove and write for a white sensation or random process. 
and rxx of t comma t plus tau we can write as rxx of tau minus x bar of t and x bar of t plus tau for a white sense stationary random process mean at t seconds and t plus tau seconds both are same right it is x bar of t whole square for a white sense stationary random process this value and this value are same because moments are independent of time mean value at this t seconds and t plus tau seconds both are exactly same say this one observe this one is it not same as the result that we have discussed previously remember cxy and rxy relation what is the relation between them as we have written it cxy is equal to rxy minus x bar into y bar correct huh? the result that we got here is it same as this these two results are exactly same no only thing is notation is different Fine. Hi, Sayudai. Sayudai, Somidi. Good evening. Fine. I hope uh, you have understood uh, autocorrelation function and autocovariance function and the relation between them. And you have also understood what is white sense stationary random process. You have understood uh, for white for a random process to be white sense stationary. what are the conditions these are the conditions <clears throat> can i move forward give me a minute so since we have talked about autocorrelation function let us quickly talk about properties of autocorrelation function properties of autocorrelation function only two properties and few observation few extra observations also will be there see signals if you want to score marks actually signals looks like an easy subject but it is not there is a lot of scope to understand everybody feels that uh, it looks like uh, you know only surface level signals signals and systems is easy but if you go to the depth of it uh, it's a beautiful subject a wonderful subject there is a lot to understand in it only you understand the depth of signals and systems then only you can score marks okay so so the only way to score marks is you should get the depth of the subject you may say that sir i have the depth of the subject if you have the depth of the subject obviously you should be able to solve the questions if you are not able to solve the questions means you lack a little depth in the subject so identify what topics you have you lack uh, the depth and focus on those topics you don't need to focus on don't uh, i mean sometimes what happens is sometimes when we get less marks uh, we feel that we are uh, uh, we are very average student or uh, our preparation is very mediocre sometimes we assume that our preparation might be very good but in in some exam we might not perform well so don't get demotivated so try to analyze where is the fault and try to correct that fault instead of imagining the unnecessary wrong things instead of unnecessarily thinking negatively identify the topics that you are finding difficulty and sometimes the paper might be tough also or some on, on that particular day your focus may not be good you are might be thinking about uh, unnecessarily about some things or you are feeling little low on that day that is that is why also you might be scoring less so because of uh, the severe situation on that particular day you might have scored less but that does not mean that you are weak in that topic right so genuinely if you feel that you are having little less uh, skill in that topic so try to develop that skill it's very easy to get demotivated man it's very easy not only you for me also for anyone else it's very easy to get demotivated 
and the way the same way it, it is easy to get demotivated same way you can get motivated also only thing is you should be conscious of it you should be consciously motivating yourself yes i am from ec stream <clears throat> So if you're from, if you are uh, an aspirant of 2023, then definitely you can listen to my classes in future and you can score more marks. That much I can promise. But if you're 2022 aspirant, um, you can go through a lot of my YouTube videos are there for revision if at all, if you have time. I don't uh, see compulsory, you have to watch my lectures, not required. If you have time for those that subject, then only you go through my lectures, otherwise, you go with your plan like writing mock tests and uh, whatever plan you have initially in the mind don't change that plan okay trust your plan and follow it religiously okay so properties of autocorrelation function can anyone tell me what is the first property of autocorrelation function we have to encourage you man if we can't encourage you who will encourage you So properties of autocorrelation function. First property, the autocorrelation function we have learned in random process and the autocorrelation function that we have learned in signals and systems that is about the autocorrelation function of deterministic signals. For that autocorrelation function and this autocorrelation functions properties are same. That to, to do properties that we are talking about will be same whether you are talking about autocorrelation function of a random signal or a deterministic signal for both cases it is same. <coughs> But uh, we'll generally be talking about uh, our intention is only discussion of whites and stationary random process. We are not at all interested in non whites and stationary random processes. In a problem, if they don't mention whites and stationarity random process also, you can assume it is whites and stationary and do the problem. So properties of autocorrelation function of a WSS random process. We are interested only in WSS random processes. The first property is RXX of Tau. I'm not writing it as T comma T plus tau because we are discussing only white sense stationary random process. Rxx of tau is equal to Rxx of minus tau. Correct? This is the first property, which means what does what does that mean? Autocorrelation function is an even function of time. Sorry, even function of tau time difference. And one such behavior is even function. If somebody shows us a function and it is not even function, you can guarantee that it is not, it does not represent an autocorrelation function. For a function to be autocorrelation function, it should definitely be an even function of tau. Tau is time difference. Second property is second property is Rxx of tau equal to zero. Rxx of tau equal to zero, which means autocorrelation at tau equal to 0, time difference 0 is always greater than or equal to any other time difference. What this means is, the meaning of this is expectation of x of t into x of t plus tau. The t plus tau is 0 here, which means you are trying to find the correlation between random variable t seconds and random variable t seconds only. Which means you are talking about a correlation between same random variables. Correlation between same variables, same random variables, will it be highest or not? If you take two random variables, there will be some correlation. But when we be the correlation highest, if I correlate my with myself, then only the correlation will be highest. Same random x of t with x of t will have highest correlation compared to correlation between any other random variables. That is what is the meaning of this. Sort of correlation is highest between between same random variables correct between same random variables or we can also say that autocorrelation is highest at tau equal to zero the meaning of uh, autocorrelation being highest at tau equal to zero is autocorrelation is maximum when you talk about autocorrelation between two same random variables These are the two properties of autocorrelation function. If anybody gives you autocorrelation function, if it is not having the highest value at tau equal to zero, 
okay these are the two properties next there are some more things some observations in this autocorrelation function if you put tau equal to 0 what does that represent what does that represent the third point here is it represents expectation of x of t into x of t plus tau which is 0 it becomes x square of t what does it represent it represents mean square value of a random process x of t it represents mean square value of random process or total a power we can say or total average power we can say total average power of x of t if x of t represents limit tau tends to infinity r x x of tau if you observe the autocorrelation function at tau equal to infinity what is the meaning of it you are trying to find what is what is the meaning of it x of expectation of x of t into x of t plus tau you are trying to find the correlation between two random variables of the same random process which are very wide you are taking one random variable t, t equal to 0 seconds you are taking another random variable at infinite seconds or dc power you can also call it as dc power if you are if the random process that we are talking about is current or voltage fine so if you put tau equal to infinity in the autocorrelation function the result that we get is the dc power generally the correlation as you move far let's say if i'm talking about something whatever i'm speaking is a random process only whatever i'm speaking now and whatever i'm speaking i'm going to speak after one minute there will be some correlation between them whatever i'm speaking now and whatever i'll be speaking after 10 minutes there will be little less correlation what i'll be talking now and what i'll be talking day after tomorrow will have very less correlation correct as the time gap increases correlation also decreases now and correlation is even this happens if x and y are uncorrelated correct less east correlation means uncorrelated from the vehicle call it we call two random variables are uncorrelated if they have the least correlation right so if x of t and x of t plus tau when tau is infinity the gap between the random random variables is very huge they are no way related because the time gap is so huge that there will not be any correlation between them can we assume that these two are uncorrelated if tau equal to infinity if these two are uncorrelated we know these are two random variables if they are uncorrelated random variables joint moment can be written as multiplication of individual moments right so we can write it as x bar of t into x bar of t plus tau since we are talking about w as random process the mean of x of t and mean of x of t plus tau both are same so that's why we can write it like this i hope you are getting it okay so one more point if <coughs> If x of t, the random process x of t has periodic components, then what can you comment about autocorrelation function? If x of t has periodic components, then rxx of tau also will have periodic components, also will have periodic components with same period. So these are the five points you should keep in mind uh, using which we can solve any problem on autocorrelation function. Okay, very good. So any questions you have till now you can ask me. The chat box is not updating for me. I don't know why.
Okay. Right. Since we have talked about autocorrelation function, now let us talk about power spectral density. So once I am done with power spectral density, we'll do a problem on uh, problem. We'll do some problems on autocorrelation and power spectral density. For a wide sense stationary random process only, we will talk about autocorrelation function and power spectral density function. Power spectral density is also a function. Okay. So since this is revision class, I'm going to go with uh, just the relation. Autocorrelation function. For a wide sense stationary random process, it is only a function of tau. Its uh, t will vanish. So if you find the Fourier transform of this one, this autocorrelation function is a function of tau. One variable instead of t it is tau function of tau so if you can find the Fourier transform for this one whatever we get that is what we call as power spectral density which we denote it as s x x of f or we can take one x only instead of two x so we can take one x also instead of two x here you can take one x also in different books they follow different notations notation is not really very important uh, you can follow any 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 notation finally it is autocorrelation function the properties of autocorrelation function will remain same irrespective of notations so, but frequency, when you're talking about Fourier transform, Fourier transform, you can write it as a function of f or function of w also. I mean omega, it's not w, it's omega. So, autocorrelation function, autocorrelation function, Fourier transform is, we call it as power spectral density, in short, we call it as PSD. Power spectral density has the information of power. What, what it has is, it has information of power, it has information of power concentrated at every frequency, power concentration or power density you can call, power concentration at every frequency, at every frequency how much power is, uh, how much power is concentrated, that information is given by power spectral density. And what information does the autocorrelation function have? It has the information of info about correlation between all random variables available in the random process. Auto, uh, random process has lots of random variables. No, among these, what is the relation between all these different random variables? That relation, that correlation between all random variables of the random process, relation between all random variables of the random process is given by this function, autocorrelation function. Info about correlation between all random variables of the random process. And there is a re beautiful relation between these two. Autocorrelation function Fourier transform if you take it is power spectral density. So just let us write it. Let us write uh, it in this form. Fourier transform of Rxx of tau is equal to Sxx of f or Sxx of omega. Okay, so you know the formula for Fourier transform integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. Rxx of tau e power minus d omega tau d tau. This is equal to Sxx of f or Sxx of Omega. Similarly, so the reverse relation. Inverse Fourier transform of Sxx of f is equal to Rxx of tau. Inverse Fourier transform of power spectral density will give us autocorrelation function. Let us write that mathematical formula. Integration Sxx of f d power j omega tau d f we're talking about f it should be f only instead of omega you can write it as 2 pi tau you can write it as 2 pi tau so 
So if you integrate with respect to f, f will vanish. It will be a function of only time. Or if you are, if you want to write it as uh, in terms of omega, the same formula you can also write it as s x x of omega into e bar j omega tau into d omega. So then there should be a 1 by 2 pi here because d omega if you are writing there should be a 1 by 2 pi in the inverse Fourier transform formula. This will give us r x x of tau. Okay. So if you put tau equal to 0, if you put tau equal to 0 in autocorrelation function, you can put it in this formula also. What are you going to get? Minus infinity to plus infinity s x x of f df. What is the meaning of this? Power spectral density, you are integrating. Integrating means you are finding the area. Integrating means you are accumulating. You are adding up the power then concentrations at every frequency. If you are adding up the power concentrated at every frequency, you are trying to add up the total power. So what should that give you? It should give the total power in the random process. right? And this if you observe, we already know that when you put tau equal to 0, you are going to get the mean square value or total average power. But here, from the meaning of power spectral density, also if you try to understand, power spectral density gives us the information about power concentration at every frequency. If you integrate, you are trying to add up all the power, so actually you will get the total power. So from by using autocorrelation function, also you can find the total power. By using power spectral density, also you can find the total power, right? Which also can be written as one by two pi times integration from minus infinity to plus infinity, s x x of omega and d omega. So this one, if your uh, power spectral density is given as a function of omega instead of f, if it is given as a function of omega, if you put tau equal to zero here, find the area of power spectral density and then divide with 2 pi if you are dealing with omega. Same funda, you are adding up all the power by using integration. Since the variable is omega here, you are putting a 1 by 2 pi after doing the integration. So that value will be same as this, same as this. Okay. Very good. Right. So let us talk about properties of power spectral density quickly. Properties of power spectral density of a random process of a WSS random process specifically. We are not interested in non WSS random processes. The first property is to try to understand the first property of autocorrelation function. We have we know the relation between autocorrelation function and power spectral density. The first property of autocorrelation function is autocorrelation function is even function of tau. In time domain, if it is even function, in frequency domain also it should be even function. Correct or not? From Fourier transform properties. If x of t Fourier transform is x of t, if you have a signal, if your Fourier transform is x of f or x of omega, if this is real and even in time domain you can just recollect the properties of Fourier transform it will be real and even in Fourier transform also so from that basic uh, basics of Fourier transform you can understand that since uh, autocorrelation function is uh, since autocorrelation function is real and even its Fourier transform power spectral density also will be real and even so the first property is sx of f or sx of omega is equal to s x x of minus f which means power spectral density is an even function of f or omega that is the first property second property is um, the very basic uh, uh, understanding of Give me a second. Okay. Second property is the basic uh, property of uh, power. Power can never be negative, right? So if power can never be negative, power spectral density is the information of power only. 
how much power is concentrated at every frequency that can never be negative so which means power spectral density can never be negative it should be a <coughs> non negative function sx x of f should always be greater than or equal to 0 at any frequency it should be only positive or it can be zero it can never be negative psd is non negative at any frequency <coughs> wonderful uh, anything any other observations that we can make here any other observations how do you find the power rxx of tau equal to 0 will give us the total power <coughs> which you can find using power spectral density also as just integrate the power spectral density integrating the power spectral density means you are adding up all the power that will give you the total power or if you are dealing in terms of omega if you are dealing in terms of omega there should be a 1 by 2 pi extra do the same integration do the same integration but after integration do 1 by 2 pi to get the power the answer if you do this or this it will be same which one should we use this one or this one based on how they give the power spectral density if they are giving the power spectral instance, uh, density as a function of omega then you do this if there is power spectral density as a function of f you do this oh is it okay So mean subtitles you are seeing huh? oh okay now also you are seeing subtitles not done this before so Uh, yeah, so I'll uh, have to. I'm not an expert in this. Uh, I've not, not never explored more about this PPT. Mm, anyway, I'll uh, get to know what should be done uh, by the next class. Okay, for this class, kindly adjust. Okay. okay right so what is the fourth point the fourth point is uh, what we have discussed previously is yeah regarding the dc power the fourth point in autocorrelation function is about dc power right yeah dc power how do we get dc power by using autocorrelation function by putting tau equal to infinity so 
how do you understand the presence of DC? So if there is presence of DC using autocorrelation function, we can find it. By putting tau equal to infinity, we will find whether there is DC or no DC. Correct? So how do you recognize that using power speculum? It's the same recognition of DC power. How much is DC power or whether DC power is there or not? How do you recognize using power spectral density? Try to understand. So if there is DC, which means a constant value. In autocorrelation function, there is some kind of constant added to the autocorrelation function. That is when we get no. So if there is some kind of DC power in the autocorrelation function, DC power, when you take Fourier transform, what happens? Constant Fourier transform is impulse. I hope you remember that. A, Fourier transform is A into del of tau. Correct? Huh? So constant will get converted to impulse in frequency domain. Right? So if uh, there is a DC power, there is DC power, which means uh, there is some constant uh, kind of signal in autocorrelation function. So if there is constant signal in autocorrelation function, that will get converted to impulse in a Fourier transform. So power spectral density will consist of what? Will consist of impulses. Will consist of impulses where at tau equal to zero, not other places, A Fourier transform is A into del of omega or a del of f, not del of f minus something, right? A Fourier transform is A into del of f. So power speculum consists of impulse, in not impulses, it is impulse only, only one impulse. Impulse at uh, tau equal to zero, if uh, DC power is non-zero, if DC power is, is non-zero, if DC power is zero, then impulse will be absent at tau equal to zero. At tau equal to zero, there is an impulse. Then only there is non-zero DC power. At tau, at uh, sorry, my mistake. It's not at tau equal to zero. It's f equal to zero. I'm talking about power spectral density, right? Power spectral density will consist of impulse at f equal to zero, at zero frequency. Zero frequency represents DC, right? Here also in power spectral density also, how do you find the power at f equal to zero? Power DC power. DC power is equal to power at f equal to zero. How do you find that? It's not the value at value of power spectral density at f equal to zero. It's the area of the power spectral density at f equal to zero. Zero minus to zero plus, which means you are talking about power concentration at zero f equal to zero. If you want to find the power concentration at f equal to zero, that will give us the DC power. So try to integrate only from zero minus to zero plus to find the DC power. If that, if you are not having an impulse, this area will be zero. Even if the amplitude is non-zero at f equal to zero, even if the amplitude is non-zero, DC power can be zero. Only if there is an impulse, then only this area will become non-zero. I hope you are following. If there is any unclear thing, in the, I'll discuss a problem in the next slides, then it will be more clear. So, about, how about the last point? The last point in the autocorrelation function is about periodicity. If, uh, auto, if, auto, if a random process has periodic components, something like cos omega naught, sin omega naught kind of things, then autocorrelation function also will have similar periodic components with the same period, right? So the same periodicity, how do you recognize whether there is a periodic component or not using power spectral density? How do you recognize whether there is periodic components or not using, by looking at power spectral density, how do you recognize periodic, whether there is periodic components or not? Just know, before the fourth point is about how do we recognize DC power is present or not, or how much is the DC power using power spectral density. Just now we will discuss that. How about recognizing periodic components using power spectral density? Try to understand cos omega naught t kind of signal. What is the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t? Del of f minus f naught plus del of f plus f naught. Right? Impulse is it? Other places other than f equal to zero and other locations if there is impulse in power spectral density if there are impulses at uh, at any other location other than f equal to zero at any other locations other than f equal to zero if there are impulses it is because of cos or sine kind of signals in the time domain so periodic components are present in x of t means periodic components will be present in autocorrelation also so periodic components are present in autocorrelation then power spectral density will have Fourier transform of those power periodic components Fourier transform periodic components will result in impulses at uh, non-zero locations. Impulses at f not equal to zero. 
PSD will consist of will consist of impulses at f not equal to zero locations if if x of t the random process x of t has periodic components like e power j omega not t cos omega not t sin omega not t kind of uh, kind of kind of components okay so if you have digested these properties any question on power spectral density can be easily done so you should just clearly understand the properties of power spectral density and properties of autocorrelation function definitely there will be a question in you know, one of these two topics autocorrelation and power spectral density every time generally they are asking a question high weightage, high weightage topic you can say i mean high weightage means generally there's a damn sure question from this topic and uh, easy also it, you can solve it easily once you understand the concept correctly i'm moving ahead now let us do a problem here okay let us do a problem x of t is a Quickly answer me these questions. Find the following. First question. Expectation of x square of t. Easy question. Second thing. Sigma x of t square third x bar of t mean value fourth question expectation of x of four and x of six.
right <coughs> First one, so how do you find the mean square value from autocorrelation function? Very simple, put tau equal to 0, put tau equal to 0 in the autocorrelation function, at tau equal to 0, what is the value? It is 8 units. In the autocorrelation function, the value at tau equal to 0 represents the mean square value or a total average power. Next, how about the variance? If you want to find the variance, it is AC power, you already know the total power. If you want to find the AC power, you should know the DC power. How do you find the DC power? So DC power is at tau equal to infinity. At tau equal to infinity, what is the value? Zero. At tau equal to infinity, whatever is the value of the autocorrelation function, that will give you the DC power. Since DC power is zero, DC value is also zero. Since DC power is zero, AC power and total power are same. So that will be eight units. Correct? Since mean is zero, DC power is zero, DC power is zero, AC power and total power both are same. Who will tell me the answer for the fourth question? Kishan Pintyala. Very good, very good. Fifth question is zero. Wonderful, man. Wonderful. So, eighth question. Not yet done. Yeah, okay, good. Keep doing. Fine. So how about this one? X of 4 into X of 6. It is looking like correlation between two random variables of the same random process X of t with the time gap. What is the time difference? Or this is correlation between two random variables of same random process. Since we are talking about white sense stationary random process, it depends only on the time difference. So what is the time difference? 6 minus 4 is 2 seconds. The gap between the two random variables that you are talking about is only 2 seconds. So it depends on autocorrelation function will have correlation between two random variables of all the correlation between two, any two random variables of the same random process it is rx6 of tau, the time difference. What is the time difference here? 6 minus 4 is 2. The autocorrelation function is clearly given. You can find the value at 2 seconds. What the value at 2 seconds will be? 4 units. Next one. Here also, this is also correlation between two random variables. So, autocorrelation function, if you can understand the value at uh, how much is the time difference here? Don't think that it is 2, it is not 2. I'm trying to confuse you. What is the time difference here? It is 198. 100 minus of minus 98 or minus 98 minus 100. If you do, it will be minus 198. Since it is even function, Rxx of 198 or minus 198 will be same. Which is, how much is 198? The value is 0. So, correlation is 0. Okay. How about this one? The random process has a mean square value of 8 units at any time. Whether it is 1000 seconds or 10,000 seconds, it should not matter for us. Because it is white sense stationary, mean square value is same at every time. If you know that uh, mean square value, general mean square value, it is the same value at every time. So it is again 8. At 700 seconds, what is the variance? Variance at any time is 8. So at 700 seconds also, it should be 8. Who has answered me this eighth question? Anyone? See, because it's zero. See, I have confused you a little bit. So it's not x of seven minus x of seven bar. If it was x of seven bar, <coughs> I wanted to have given you that. It would be the covariance. It would be the covariance. Okay, but it is not covariance. So what should you should do? Just simply expand it and do it. No, simple, as simple as that. It is x of seven into x of six, x of six into x of seven is the first term. Right, x of 6 into x of 7. Next one, minus x of 6 bar into x of 7 minus x of 6 into x of 9 bar. Next, minus into minus is plus x bar of 6 into x bar of 9. Quickly tell me this. It is First term is x of 6 into x of 7. It is like correlation between two random variables with a time gap of 1 second. So it is rxx of time gap is 1 minus x bar of 6 is a constant. Correct? Or else it is 0. No, simple. It's, it's more simple. 0 here. This is 0. x bar of 9 is 0. x bar of 6 and x bar of 9. Mean is 0 at any time. 
So the answer is finally R X X of one. What is R X X of one? What is the value at one? Value at one will be six units. Very good. So the answer is six units. Very good. Come on, you guys are good. So have confidence when a new question is given. Have confidence that you have the concept that is required for it. Just have the have the confidence and just uh, jump into the problem. You apply your basic. Trust the trust yourself that you know you know how to do the problem. Whenever you face a new question, if you are uh, putting a backward step, then you can't uh, reach greater heights. You should have the confidence to attempt a new question or to take a new bigger risk. The risk that you are new to, you should be able to take it. Otherwise, how can we reach greater heights? How we perform in the pressure situations? How we perform when the situation is new? That is what uh, makes the difference between us and others. Okay, I'm moving forward. The value beside this impulse is uh, also 100 units. The height here is 10 units. So the what I've given is power spectral density of the random process. Now the questions are like this. The DC power you can say or RXX, sorry, not DC power, the total power. Second question is DC power or DC value. Let me ask you DC value. Next, uh, variance.
try them let's see how fast you can answer them easy questions only very good question <laughs> dc value i've asked now not dc power very nice See, DC power, how do you recognize? We have discussed that in the properties in the previous slide. And DC power will be there only if there is an impulse at zero. Yes, there is an impulse, which means there is non-zero DC power. There is DC power. And how much is the DC power? Area from zero minus to zero plus. So from this 10 value, I can't say that this, there is DC power. Because of impulse, there is a DC power. So how do we recognize the DC power? X bar of T square is dc power how do you find it from the power spectral density power spectral density has the information of power concentration at every frequency so if you want dc power dc power means power at f equal to zero frequency so if you want to find that zero minus to zero plus f equal to zero minus to zero plus if you integrate you are trying to find the power at zero frequency so that will give us the dc power and how much is that zero minus to zero plus if you integrate because of this 10 you are not getting a non-zero value because of this impulse you are getting a zero value Whatever is beside the impulse, that will give you the area of the impulse, which is 100. So DC power is 100. So DC value, should it be plus 10 or minus 10? It can be plus 10 or minus 10. Anything is fine, no? It can be plus 10 or it can be minus 10 also. Minus 10 is also fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, good. It's very good, Deepak. Next, how about tau equal to zero? You are talking about RxS of tau equal to zero, which means expectation of x square of t. You are talking about total power. Or how do you find that using power spectral density? Just integrate it. And since you are dealing in terms of f, since f is the variable, just integrate it. That will give us the total power. There is no need of one by two by. If they have given omega here, then you should have, you should integrate it and then divide multiply with one by two. So just integrate it. Since this is a simple function, you can integrate it directly. So what is the area of all of this? Area of this impulse is 100 plus area of this impulse is 100, area of this impulse is 100, total 300s are there because of three impulses. Plus because of this triangle, what is the area? 1000 is the width here and height is 10, 1000 into 10 is 10,000 will be the area of that triangle, 10,000. So which is total 13,000, 13,000, sorry not 13,000, my mistake. 1000 10300 10300 10300 okay right how about variance variance means only ac power ac power equal to total power minus dc power total power is 1 10300 and uh, dc power is 100 subtract the dc power from total power which will give you 10200 Anyone can tell me the answer for the next one. What is the power of the periodic components? If there is periodic components in X of T, there will be periodic components in autocorrelation function also. The periodic components in Fourier transform will result in impulses. So these impulses are, are, the, are because of the periodic components. What is the power in the periodic components? It is simply power in the impulses. What is the power in the impulses? 100 plus 100 is 200. 200 watts since they're saying power i'm using the unit of watts here they're not asking power okay they're saying rx of tau equal to zero okay so if you're talking about uh, voltage or current kind of uh, random process then definitely that will be uh, that can be called as power okay but since is rx of tau equal to zero basically does not have any unit but if they're talking about power definitely can use the unit watts okay next one how about the what is the fundamental period of periodic components Cos omega naught t Fourier transform will produce impulses at f naught and minus f naught. So, 1500 is that f naught, which means fundamental frequency. Fundamental frequency we can see in the frequency domain. Fundamental frequency is 1500 hertz, right? So, we want fundamental time period. Fundamental time period is equal to 1 by fundamental frequency, which is 1 by 1500 unit is seconds d 
Deepak, fourth one, why 20,000? Two zeros extra, why? Simple, impulses, whatever is written on top of the impulse, that itself is the area. That is itself is the area of the impulse. That will give you the power. Power concentration at 50, 1500 is area at that point, which is 100 only. Fine. I hope it is clear till this point, everyone. So have confidence that you know, you have understood everything. Then you will be able to attempt, even if they give you a tricky question also, you will be able to attempt it. But confidence matters. In the exam, sometimes we might lose that confidence, then we will not have the confidence, we will not uh, be able to, we will be afraid of attempting uh, questions that are new, that are that we have not solved previous, previously. New models will be a little fearful of attempting. So our mindset on that particular day of exam definitely will matter. No problem, Deepak. Fine, very good. So we are done with the, these three topics. So I've revised autocorrelation function and power spectral density as well. So relation between two random processes we'll discuss. So if you remember, we have talked about relation between two random variables like uncorrelated relation, orthogonal relation and uh, independent relation. <coughs> Similarly, let us talk about relation between two random processes. If expectation of x of t into y of t, if that is 0, we are talking about two different uh, random processes here, x of t and y of t. If uh, the average of their products is 0, what can we say? Same concept, x, expectation of x into y is 0, x and y random variables are orthogonal. Similarly, x of t and y of t are orthogonal. What I mean by this is, every there are a lot of random variables in x of t, there are a lot of random variables in y of t, all random variables in x of t are orthogonal to all random variables in y of t. That is the meaning of uh, two random processes being orthogonal. Two random processes are orthogonal means all random variables in first random process, all random variables in second random process are all orthogonal to each other. Or we can also write it this way, r x y of t comma t plus 2. So this is cross correlation we call it. So it is given by the definition x of t into y of t plus 2. If this becomes 0 then also we can say that the auto correlation, cross correlation this we call it as cross correlation. If cross correlation becomes 0 instead of auto correlate instead of correlation now we are calling it as cross correlation but basically this is correlation. If correlation becomes 0 we know that two random variables are orthogonal. Similarly, if correlation becomes zero, random processes are also orthogonal. Next, if cxy of t comma t plus two. So this kind of question, whatever I am discussing in this page, only they can frame a theoretical question from it. Uh, numericals, even if the frame also it will be simple and straightforward only. So it is cxy of t comma t plus two. The mean definition of this is x of t minus x bar of t. It's like c x y expectation of x minus x bar into y minus y bar. Covariance. So we call it as cross covariance because it is covariance between two different random processes. 
same fund whatever we have discussed in random variables no deviation at all from this only notation is different meaning is same so y of t plus tau the second random process is analyzed at time instant t plus tau seconds so if this becomes zero if this becomes zero then we can say x of t and y of t are uncorrelated try to understand the meaning of this it means there are a lot of random variables in the first random process a lot of random variables in the second random process every random variable in the first random process is also is uncorrelated to every other random variable in the other random process all random variables in the first random process are uncorrelated to all random variables in the second random process okay so if you remember when two random variables are uncorrelated, cxy is equal to 0. cxy equal to 0 means rxy equal to x bar into y bar that will happen no? in a similar manner. cxy of t comma t plus tau when will become 0 when two random variables are uncorrelated. In that situation, what happens to auto cross covariance? rxy of t comma t plus tau can be written as x bar of t multiplied with y bar of t plus tau same funda that we have discussed in random variables cxy should be zero when x and y are uncorrelated Is it fine now? <clears throat> Cos x of t multiplied with sin y of t Since x of t and y of t are independent, cos x of t and sin y of t are also independent So, since these two terms are independent, we can write a joint moment as multiplication of individual moments Okay, there is one more. Uh, there is one more uh, relation between two random variables. Jointly, white cell stationary random process. Is there buffering again? So sorry about that. So I don't have control over uh, the network. Sometimes, very few times, uh, there might be some network problem to my side. But generally, rarely it happens. So jointly white cell stationary random process random processes this is one more relation between two random processes which we don't have this kind of relation we did not discuss in random variables actually two random processes x of t and y of t are jointly white cell stationary are jointly white cell stationary random processes if so under these conditions we can call them as jointly white cell first thing is x of t is white cell stationary when you're talking about uh, two random processes being uh, jointly white cell stationary first thing that should happen is first random process should be white cell stationary second also should be white cell stationary third one is the cross correlation rx y of t comma t plus tau is should be independent of time and r y x of t comma t plus tau 
should be independent of it. If both are individually wise and stationary and their cross correlation is independent of time. The both the cross correlation R X Y or R Y X both kind of cross. If one is independent of time, other also definitely will be independent of time. Should be independent of time. If these three conditions are satisfied, then we can say that two random processes are jointly wide sense stationary. Okay. I hope you have understood the relation between the random processes. So try to understand. So if the product, if we are, if the expectation of the product is zero, it is orthogonal relation. If the expectation of the product, if the expectation of the product can be written as a multiplication of individual products, that is uncorrelated relation. But here only first order, first order uh, uh, joint product, joint moment, first order joint moment. If it is written as multiplication of individual then it is uncorrelated relation or the reverse is also if you are able to write like this we can call them as uncorrelated okay if the joint moment is equal to zero we can say that they are unorthogonal but for independent case but for independent case not only the first order i mean x of t y of t power one can be written as multiplication of individual moments but any or any power any power or any other function of x of t any other function of y of t if you are able to write like this then they are independent or if you are able to write like this Anything other than only this one, if somebody is saying only this is happening, we can say that they are uncorrelated. Apart from this, anything else is happening, the second one or third one or anything else is happening, then we can say that they are independent. In joint weights and stationary means individually they should be weights and stationary. Find the cost cross correlation, one of the cross correlation, and if you find that t is vanishing from that, we can say that it is jointly white sense stationary. Okay. Fine. So, anything else we'll discuss in the, the next class. So, we'll stop at this place. Um, so, if, if you feel that this class will be helpful for any of your friends, you can share it with them so that it will help them as well. So that I'll be happy that I'm helping more people. And uh, all the best for your preparation. So, demotivations will come and go. So try to understand that they are only they are also temporary phases in the process for preparation. Like there are high phases, right? Sometimes when we understand things very clearly, when a concept is understood very clearly, we'll feel like we will feel like on top of the world. No. Similarly, some some uh, overconfident situations will be there, like that underconfident situations will be there. So from underconfident situation or overconfident situation, try to come to the base, a normal situation. The longer you try to stay in the normal situation, the better for you okay right so so put your efforts as much as possible so i wish you the best result possible for your efforts thank you we'll meet again tomorrow at the same time okay